this Sue. This is Sue and Tim Hello. of the Mind Reels. Hey, Tim, how's it going? It's uh, Philip calling. Yeah, it is. <laughs> How do you say your last name? Is it Riccio? Yeah, that's actually, that's perfect, yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> First question out of the box. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to talk about your work with uh, on real side, talking with George Romero. Yes. Which is very cool because I guess apparently, well, you were in Diary of the Dead. I was. Yeah, Romero. that's that's how I met him originally. Excellent. So, who who pitched the idea of going to Romero and and were you the one to reach out to him? How did that go? Uh, yeah. I mean, I. Raj and I, uh, the producers of Real Side, Raj and Chris Sarka, um, were, were people I had known for a while. I worked with them on uh, the series rent a and we'd kind of kept in touch and uh, through the years and talked about various projects. And then, so I think Raj was, I was, went out with Raj one night and he told me about Real Side. And I had been in conversations already with George about uh, maybe working together on something, and so this seemed like the perfect project. So I mentioned it to Raj, and uh, he was, he was excited about the idea, and then we kind of took it from there. Very and he's an honorary Torontonian now. <laughs> he is, yeah. I mean, we did Diary of the Dead. I don't even know how many years ago that was. It was a long time ago, but I, I kept in touch with George because yeah, because he lives here, and I um I started directing after I had done Diary of the Dead, so I would just kind of call George or email him and pick his brain about different <laughs> things and you know a pretty good resource to have when you're starting out as a director for sure oh just a little bit yeah, yeah. <laughs> excuse me when I go email George <laughs> <laughs> but you know he's he's super friendly that way and, and uh, just a really approachable guy I didn't know any of his work when I got cast in Diary of the Dead really so I got yeah well, I mean I had heard of Night of the Living Dead but I hadn't seen it uh, it just kind of isn't the genre that I, I'm really into, and so I kind of met. You know, we we connected originally just as you know, as artists and filmmakers, and not. So I, I think it kind of helped me that I I wasn't, you know, I wasn't such a super fan of his work to be, you know, at, at <laughs> yeah. first when I met him. So I wasn't in awe when I met him at first. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, but uh, I was just super impressed. Uh, by him as a director to be honest on set he's got a really great vibe he creates a really trusting fun environment to work in uh, he lets you be really creative as an actor and uh, I really appreciated that and really admired it so it was more on you know from that level that uh, I really wanted to to kind of take him on as a, as a mentor and so I would just kind of harass him as much as I could about, <laughs> about filmmaking and stuff and so it was on set that you know I got some of those early stories about him making Night of the Living Dead and it just mm. kind of blew my mind about the difference between independent filmmaking when he started in the 60s versus now and and that kind of became the basis of, of my episode of Real Facts. Excellent. Yeah. See, I'm trying to do the same thing with Del Toro. I mean, he's in Toronto all the time. <laughs> he just doesn't yeah, show my emails yet. He's good for sure. <laughs> but yeah, coming coming to Romero like that, though as not a super fan, that's got to be one. It's got to be refreshing for him, and two, just speaking on terms of being artists together, that's got to be just. It's got to be a whole kind of different level of conversation. Yeah, and I mean, he knows film. Like, you know, he talking to him about film is is a crash course for sure his, the knowledge he has is amazing you know he he broke in with uh, or, or he became known because of Night of the Living Dead but uh, he, he was uh, just uh, really interested in filmmaking as a young man and, and had a lot of ideas that he wanted to make and then I think when Night of the Living Dead became such a success he was thrown into that genre and became known for that genre but mm -hmm. his interest is certainly very very different you know most of his favorite films he would he you know he showed me clips and we would talk about them and their films uh, i had never heard of i still couldn't tell you what they were <laughs> very strange expressionistic wow. european things yeah yeah it's crazy yeah, and he seems like he still has fun doing what he does too, which is different from some people. It's still yeah, everything's sure. a passion project for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
you, you just bring up film to him and his, you know, he lights up and he'll just, you know, you can talk to him for hours about it. That was so cool. Yeah, because it ends up that everybody will say Night of the Living Dead is my favorite, but mine hap- and I, my name is actually just blanked on it, where it's, uh, it's Night Something and it's about uh, motorcycles and a circus and it's just a, like a Renaissance Fair on motorbikes, basically, with Ed Harris and Tom Savini. That's like my f- oh, wow. favorite Romero film. It's amazing. So, but so so you guys talked about film. You talked about his creative process. Uh, what what can we look forward to seeing in the episode? So the episode essentially through our early discussion, uh, you know, we were talking a lot about what it was like to make independent film on film. You know, back in the day mm. with. with with, with much different tools than we use today. So, and, and then through those conversations, we discovered that he had a film company really early on before Night of the Living Dead with the, with the guys he produced Night of the Living Dead with, uh, and they're in the episode as well. And, uh, but there was a, there was a fire, I think, yeah, it was a fire and they lost, you know, they lost a lot of their early work. Mm-hmm. And one of George's first, I think his very first feature film was actually a series of short vignettes. And one of those vignettes was called Expostulations. And so we decided because, you know, he had memories of it, but had, there was no hard copy of it. We decided that we would make our episode uh, a around recreating expostulations which was one that's of George's cool. very first work cool. yeah so that's what we do during the episode we try to make it in the way that George made it in the early 60s so we use some of the old cameras and film stock and then oh, we go into the that. old editing room and uh, we try to edit in the way that George used to back in the day and that, that part of the process is, is mind blowing for sure just and he talks about editing Night of the Living Dead and these old reels, you know, cutting, mm. physically cutting it together. And it's just such a different process now. It feels like a completely different activity. Do you, ha- do you, you know, have a yeah. preference? Like, if you had the chance to go back and shoot like Romero did in the 60s, would you do that or would you shoot like you would today? Well, I was, that was kind of one of the questions that the episode wanted to answer. You know, because I, I've come to film directing kind of later. I'm in my 30s, and I've been an actor for a long time. And uh, so I grew up watching film, you know, real film was a thing. It's not like I'm a kid, and, and that was not part of my life. It was, and the idea of filmmaking, you know, was always about actually using film. But then by the time I actually started making films, that was, that was gone. So when I made my first short, there was still kind of conversations about mm, well, should we do this on film or digital and then by the time I made my second short there was no conversation <laughs> you know film, film was not an option at all was, you know you don't even talk about it anymore so I thought uh, you know I, I, it just kind of bugged me that I would have no experience whatsoever working with film mm-hmm. and yet you know still using the term filmmaker <laughs> uh, and uh and so this, this episode really became my only chance to use it, you know, that I think I'll ever have in my career to actually do it. And then, I, and, I, and I thought George would be really nostalgic for the thing, and he, I think he thought he was going to be too, but through the process of trying to recreate it in the exact same way that he made expostulations, we both, I think, decided that it's much better the way we do things now. <laughs> I mean, especially the the editing process, especially, and and just you know something as as simple as and that we take for granted now is having playback on set. Oh yeah, you know, being able to see you know, or or even just being able to know that what you shot actually was shot properly and is is what you wanted. You know, they were kind of they wouldn't know until they got the film back days later. Yeah. And uh, just, we just cross their fingers that they may, you know, that they got the shot that they thought they did. Yeah. Whereas nowadays, you know, you can do visual effects and everything just on the fly, right then and there, and you can tell what it's going to look like just using previs. Whereas film, right. you, you had to layer everything on, you had to send it away to be processed. Yeah, I, I can see, <laughs> I can see the upside. I mean, it seems I, the big difference for me, I think, is it feels very much like today making a film is. 
it, 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 it's, it's, it's so much in your mind and being able to visualize something in your mind and then you work on it. Whereas back then it feels like it was a, much more like a, a craft, almost like, a, almost like being a carpenter or something because you were working with your hands so much. You know, George talks about being able to know how long a shot is just by holding it in his hand. Wow. You know, when you're editing something by hand and creating it like a craft, it just seemed it, it's a much different experience than I think we have now mm. uh, now it just seems uh, it's still a creative process but it's not so much kind of hands on kind of thing yeah yeah you also had to be very conscious of how much film you were using with each shot too because you couldn't go <laughs> right yeah totally <laughs> <laughs> just erase that yeah he talked yeah. about that in the episode for sure that's wild now is there anything that's not in the episode that you wish had made the cut well, there are a few things that are actually extras that you can check out online, I believe. Oh, we did uh, uh, we did a few, uh, we actually did a bunch of interviews with uh, some zombies. We, we put out a call and, and, and you know, and Tor- Toronto's become this hotbed of zombies, which, oh, yeah. Is, yeah. which is crazy. But yeah, so we just put out a call, we were doing the episode and, and we kind of, did a zo- what we call a zombie anonymous, which is a <laughs> bit like an AA meeting for zombies, and and uh, it's a pretty fun little uh, extra webisode. And then we also we had some stuff at George's house that we couldn't fit into the episode. He's got uh, he's got a pretty massive uh, rubber duck collection, really? <laughs> which we, we 